Hey everyone, for those who don't know me, I'm Stephanie Rutel. I serve as the Dean of Distance Education here at Manny U, and I also get to teach some of the Christian Leadership courses. Before we jump into this week's topic, I'd like to share a short personal story from the time I went bungee jumping. You may not know this about me, but I'm typically up for an adventure, bungee jumping, whitewater rafting, those type of things, as long as it's likely that I'll survive. My husband, some family, and I decided to do some bungee jumping, and I remember us asking the guy helping us how to get the best experience, and he said, head first, backwards. So we all decided, okay, let's do that. I was excited until it got to be my turn and I was facing away from the direction I was falling. I have to say during this count to three, I was getting a little nervous and I wasn't sure if my body would actually fall backwards after he said three. But once he said three and I breathed in and out and then I fell backwards off the ledge, head first and backwards. It was a lot of fun. I highly encourage it. Honestly, it was less a rush than I expected. Afterwards, I had two thoughts though. One, the before was worse than the actual jump. And two, okay, let's do this from a bridge now. This week, I wanna to talk to you about fearlessness. This personal example is just a very small example of how fear itself can be worse than the actual action. But we all know that fear can be crippling. And at the same time, many of us probably know someone in our lives who has a level of fearlessness, fearlessness that may be to an extreme and more accurately viewed as foolishness. We are not called to a spirit of fear. We are called to be full of faith and not foolishness. It says in 2 Timothy 1.7, for God gave us a spirit not of fear, but of power and love and self-control. The word self-control here in, is in the ESV. It's also translated in the NS, NASB as discipline and the NIV as self-discipline. So reject fear, but don't reject common sense. Don't reject sense. I grew up with three older brothers and in a small church growing up, we had other young guys around a lot. And when I read this, I think of some of those guys talking about being fearless, but sometimes that swung to the foolish side. So reject fear, embrace faith, yet stay disciplined. God gave us minds and sense to use it. But at the same time, don't let your fear take over and give excuses when God has clearly called you to something that may be a little scary. Maybe it doesn't make sense. Maybe it would appear foolish to some, but we are called to do so much more than we could do ourselves. So Stephanie, it sounds like you're contradicting yourself here. So don't let fear control you, be full of faith, but don't be foolish. But at the same time, you may appear foolish. Those times you may appear foolish, you need to make sure you know God has spoken to you. But how? This presses into your relationship with Him. Are you talking with Him? Are you reading His Word? Are you hearing from Him? An example I think of here is in Acts 14, when Paul was stoned and dragged out of the city. He appeared dead. Well, who knows, maybe he did die. But then what did he do? He got back up and entered into the city. Yes, he went back into the city that he was just stoned. Paul did not base his decisions off the fear of rejection or even the fear of dying because he did not live for what others thought of him, but rather what Jesus thought of him. If we fear others more than God, we are putting others higher in our lives than our Savior. If we fear others and what may happen to us more than what God has told us to do, we are putting ourselves and our wants first in our lives. We are called to be fearless of others and circumstances without being foolish. God tells us to be fearless, but to also be self-disciplined. The enemy uses fear to hold us back and our flesh uses fear to feed our pride. He wants to hold you back, but don't be held back by your fear. Sometimes what it takes is stopping, breathing in and then out and falling backwards, or rather asking the Holy Spirit to help you rely on his strength and be full of faith. You may not be falling off a literal edge in this circumstance, but God is still connected to you. You got this, full of faith and not fear.